Okay, so Rebbe, as far as I know, as far as I know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you were the first person to teach women Gemara, in Orthodox women Gemara, in an institutional format. Could be. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm more interested in knowing what was... Uh, the, was there a decision process? Because that ended up having historic significance, that decision. So did you make a decision, or did you kind of go with the flow? Or was there, was there some sort of process? Um, there's always process. I mean, when you make a decision, you have to make a decision based on thinking about the issue. So there was certainly process. To me, the important uh, starting out position was that I could not justify any other possibility uh, for several reasons. Firstly, because I thought that learning Gemara was the essential part of uh, Talmud Torah. And uh, I didn't know that I could offer women Talmud Torah and exclude uh, what I thought was the most important part of it. So was that, does that mean it was, it was personal? In, it was, in your giving over to uh, uh, Talmud Torah, you felt you needed to be reflecting yourself as opposed to responding to... I think it's myself. I think that's what I was taught, and that's what uh, the yeshiva curriculum is based on. They look at the, or any yeshiva curriculum, it seems like Talmud Torah is very important. And since Talmud Torah or Gemara is not a, uh, it's not just learned in order to create a profession. It's not that you're in a, a professional track, but you're learning Torah because it has special importance, a spiritual importance. I mean, how could you deny uh, that opportunity to women who wanted to learn Torah? I mean, it just didn't make sense to me at all. And of course, it seemed to me at the time, although I wasn't absolutely certain, that uh, my teachers, especially Rabbi Soloveitchik, was in favor, or understood, or thought that women should also have the opportunity to learn Torah if they so desired. So that uh, just all made sense. Uh, there was a technical thing. I mean, I found it difficult to understand why a person who had learned Gemara and Yeshiva all his life should become a, uh, a good teacher for Jewish history. I mean, you teach what you know, you teach what you've learned, you teach what you've been invested your uh, major energy in. But if Talmud Torah is the bedrock of the Jewish spiritual experience, then uh, to deny it to women seemed to me to be... Uh, Unreasonable, you know, without getting into the the fact that we would also make a bracha on Talmud Torah, and they also have to learn Torah on a practical level, and and that learning Gemara is part of that Torah that they have to learn. I mean, you just ignore all of that and just think in terms of the experiential value. And I lived at a time that was the time that women were were thinking about these things, and there were women who were interested in them. So. It all seemed to go together at the time, and didn't seem to be to be problematic in the slightest. Did you feel like you were making a halachic decision? I mean, I, I'm also trying to understand how aware you were that you were making a significant decision. That, that, did you feel like you were making a statement that you would affect the wider Jewish community, the religious community? I actually thought I was doing something very reasonable. And uh, I was a little surprised to discover that not everybody was happy about my decision or my direction. I, I didn't, uh, I couldn't really understand how anybody could um, be opposed. But apparently there were dynamic social forces that uh, felt threatened by the fact that uh, women 
uh, might be learning Torah. I mean, what would happen to the Shaduchim and what would happen to the family and what would happen? So it was kind of, it, it sort of all got out of proportion a little bit. It was, uh, if women learn Gemara, so they become the enemies of the people. Not only are they doing the wrong thing, so then uh, it seemed to me that it uh, became a worthy fight. It was in the beginning, it was, to me, a reasonable thing to do. But after I found that it was, in the minds of some, an unreasonable thing to do, uh, so it seemed to me it was, um, it was worthy. It was a worthy fight, something worth fighting about and battling for. I mean, I remind you of the fact that at that time, the Michalai and Yerushalayim, uh, a great institution, you know, which exists today. Hundreds of women study there, maybe maybe thousands. And um, Jewish studies on a respectable level, certainly they learn, they study a lot of material, you know. They, they're able to consume tremendous amounts of material. Uh, at that time, uh, they actually taught a course in Gemara, women, in the Mechlala, had the option of taking a course in Havdola, in Gemara. They called it Kiddush Havdola. They didn't say they were going to learn Gemara, but actually what they did was they learned the 10th parak of, of Psachim, and um, of course they came under tremendous attack, uh, and the attack against them may have been good for me because... Uh, like the attackers were more interested in them than they were interested in me at the time. And so they backed down. And they have never taught Gemara since. There may be teachers in the Mechala who refer to Gemaras and who even may even ask the girls to look up a Gemara, but they don't teach a course which is a Gemara, a Gemara course. And that's remained their position from that time until today. But, you, you, you but were scared we some of the heat. I mean, it's hard to say. I, mean, I don't know how much heat there was. That, but I feel that uh, that they they helped me out on that a little bit, even though they uh, capitulated, and I did not capitulate, even though I had I had difficulties, as you may know. Uh, but I could not see any reason uh, to capitulate. You know, sometimes. I guess in life sometimes you just go with your truth.